Hello everyone, this is Pablo from the C-Sharp Academy. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to call an external API with C-Sharp. We're building a console application that shows data from drinks. We get a list of categories from the API, we get the user input to choose a category, and we get a list of drinks from that category, and then we can see the details for that drink. The data is coming from the Cocktail DB, which is a public API and very useful for training. You can find the link for the API's documentation in the video description below. This is the third video of a series of console applications designed to get beginners started with back-end coding in C-Sharp. The application is purposefully making synchronous calls, so if you want to design an asynchronous application, let me know in the comments below. And the way this works is, we get the user's input, we use C-Sharp code to make an HTTP request, we reach the API, the API talks to the database and sends us back an HTTP response. Then we process that data and show it back to the user. This is a very practical tutorial, so I'm not going to explain every single piece of code. So here are a few tips to watch this tutorial. First of all, take lots of notes. That will help you to retain the content and make sense of what's going on. If you don't understand a part of the code, just hover over the part that you don't understand. C Sharp does a very good job at explaining what everything does. Also, use the debugger to step through the code and examine the flow of information. And if that is not enough, look it up online. More likely than not, your question has been answered before. Even senior professionals are looking things up online all the time. And last but not least, try to expand on the project. I left a suggestion right in the end with an idea for an expansion. So let's go. Okay, let's get started. If you haven't yet, let's create a folder for our project. So the name will be csharpacademy.console.drinksinfo. And if I click on open, Visual Studio Code will be open in the folder that I just created. Then let's open the integrated terminal and run the command .NET new console dash dash name in the name of the app. My app is going to be called Drinks Info. Then you need to make sure that you have the assets to build and debug your application. So if you didn't see this dialog with that option, you can open the command palette pressing Command Shift P on Mac or Control Shift P on Windows and choose Generate Assets to build and debug your application. That will create a .vs code folder, which will contain a launch.json. You want to go into that file and find the console property and change from internal console to external terminal. With that out of the way, let's run our app. You can do run without debugging. And you can see hello world printed on the console which means that our application is running correctly. Now let's continue and create our first class. And this class will be responsible for getting the user input. I'm creating an instance of this class in the main method, which is the starting point of our application. And then I'm creating the user input class. Now, before the user chooses a drink category, he needs to see the list of categories there are available. So let's create the class that will be responsible for interacting with the drinks API. That class is going to be called drinks service. And since we're creating our classes, let's also create the validator class, which is obviously the class that will be responsible for validating our inputs. And let's create another class called table visualization engine. And this will be the class that shows the data on the console. Then in the user input class, let's create an internal method called get categories input. And for now, this method will be void, which means that we're not returning anything. And in this method, we're going to call the drinks service. We're going to call a method called get categories. So now let's create that method. But before anything else, we need to add the rest sharp library, the REST Sharp NuGet package. So open your command palette, choose Add NuGet package, and choose REST Sharp. We will also need the newtonsoft.json 
NuGet package, which will help us deserializing the JSON response sent by the API. And we will need another NuGet package for table visualization. That's going to be the console table ext package. And make sure you restore your dependencies by clicking on restore in this dialog. And you can always check your csproj file to see if the dependencies have been properly installed. Now, before we call the API, let's create our table visualization engine. That's going to have a method that receives a list as an argument, and that list is of a generic type, so the T type. That means that we can pass lists of any type into it without having to repeat code. Notice that I also add a null check so I don't run into null exceptions in case the title is null. And I'm using the console table builder, which is a class provided by console table extension package. We're also going to add the console.clear call to keep our console more organized and readable. Now let's finally call the API. So for that, we need to create an instance of the REST client object and pass as an argument the base URL for the API, which you can find in its documentation. Then we need to create an instance of the request. Then we need to run the execute async method of the REST client, passing the request we just created. In case the result status code is OK, we're going to grab the content of the result and store it in a string. Now notice that the response returns a result object. And that's because the execute async method, as the name says, is asynchronous. Now, if you are trying to build an application that is asynchronous, then it's not good practice to call the result. That's because just using result actually makes the call synchronous. It blocks the thread until the task is completed. That would defeat the purpose of an asynchronous application. And since we're not trying to build an asynchronous application here, it's a very small app for training purposes, we're going to use result. The next step is to translate the JSON object that we receive as a response into a C-sharp type. And notice that we have a categories type and a category type. That's because of the format of the JSON that we return. We have this object that contains a list of objects. And we're going to create these two types soon. And the last thing this method does is to pass the list into our table visualization engine with the title string. Before testing if everything works, we need to create a folder called models. And in this folder, let's create the category.cs file. This file will contain both the category class, which has one string as a property, in a categories class, which has a list of categories as a property. You notice that we're using the JSON property annotation. That's because the JSON return from the API has a big object called drinks. Now back in the main method, let's make sure we're calling the get categories input method. And it looks like we can see our list of categories, which means that the API call is correct. Now that we created the method to get the categories and to show the table on the console, let's create the logic to get the user input, the category input. So we're printing a message that says choose category and we're waiting for the user input, the console.readLine method. And before moving on, we are adding validation to the user input. We're going to check if this string is valid. And this check will be the condition for a while loop to run. So while the check isn't valid, we're going to tell the user that the category is invalid and get the user input again. So let's create the method is string valid in the validator class. And the check will be very simple. We're going to return false if the string is null or empty. And also, we're going to loop through the characters of the string. And if the character isn't a letter or slash forward, we're going to return false. 
After passing all the validation, we're going to call the get drinks input method, passing the category that we want. So let's create this method. The first thing it will do is to present a list of the drinks. And for that, we're going to create another method in the drink service called get drinks by category. And the structure is very similar to the get categories method. We're just going to have to create a couple new types. So notice that the structure of this method is pretty much identical to the previous one, except that we have a drinks object and a drink object. So let's create those, and it's going to be very similar. We have a class called drinks, and it has a list of drinks, and we have a drink class which has an ID string and the name of the drink as a string. So let's see if everything works. Let's run the app. We can see the list. We get asked for the category input. And if we choose shot, we can see a list of the shot drinks. So let's continue. In the get drinks input, after being shown a list of the drinks, we need to choose one. Again, the method structure will be very similar. We print a message asking to choose a drink. We get the user input. And if it's zero, we redirect the user back to the get categories input. And then we add some validation. This time, we're choosing the drink by its ID. So we need a different validation. It's going to be an ID validation. So we're going to check if the string is null or empty and return false. And if it's not, we're going to loop through the characters and check if they are a digit. If we pass the validation, we're going to call another method in the drink service, which gets a specific drink. This method has a similar structure to the first two. We create an instance of the REST client, an instance of the request, we execute the call, and then we're storing and deserializing the JSON that's returned. The problem here is that in the result, the strings are returned with a format that we don't want. Many properties have str in the beginning of the string. That's not going to look very good when we show this data to the user. To fix that, I'm creating a temporary list of an anonymous object, and I'm creating an empty string that I will use to process the string properties. Then I'm looping through each property, and if that property contains str in its name, I'm cutting that part of the string with the substring method, passing three as an index. Then I'm checking if the string is null or empty. Many of the properties returned from the API are empty, and we don't want to show that to the user. And if they are not empty, we add that to the list that we want to show to the user. Then let's create the classes. We have a drink detail class and a drink detail object. And make sure you just copy and paste the drink detail class from the GitHub link below as it has a bunch of properties. And we should be good to go. Let's try the application, see what happens. We can see the list. If we choose a category, it shows the list of drinks. And if we pick an ID, we can see the list of properties of that drink. Now let's do some refactoring to improve our application. At the moment, if we choose a drink that doesn't exist or a category that doesn't exist, the application crashes. Try it by yourself. To fix that, we need to refactor the get categories method in the drink service. So notice that we are creating a list outside of the response code block, and we are returning the list of categories from that method. And we're doing the same thing in the get drinks by category method, creating the list first and returning the drinks, the list of drinks from the method. Back in the user input, we're storing the categories returned from the get categories method in a list and then checking if the user input matches any of the categories in that list. And we're doing that comparing the strings using link. If the category doesn't exist, we restart the method and get the user input again. And we're doing the same thing in the get drinks input, storing the drinks in a variable, and then checking if that list contains a drink that matches the user input. And in the end, we're asking for the user to press any key so we can go back to the categories menu.
And to finalize, let's modify the show table method a little bit so we show the contents in the center of the console. So let's run the app and test everything. As you can see, categories now are showing in the middle of the screen. Let's choose a category that doesn't exist and we get the correct message. Then we choose a category that exists, we get the correct list. A drink that doesn't exist, we get the correct message. And then we can finally see the details for a drink. It looks a bit strange at first, but if we expand the screen, it looks better. And in the end, if we press any key, we go back to the categories menu. And that's it, we're done. Before we go, here are some ideas for you to expand in the project. Could create a favorite drinks section, allowing the user to add drinks to your own database. If you haven't watched my first two tutorials, check them out so you learn how to create a CRUD service. You could also create a service that stores data about the most searched drinks. So that's it for now. Please subscribe if you like this tutorial and don't forget to join our community on Discord. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.